Hey guys, Runbuck with Runbuck on Games. Got another war recap for you. This time we're looking at our war with Palco. Palq? I don't know. It's a it's an acronym for something. But uh, either way, we won, as you see here, 69 to 51. Let's take a look at some of the top voted attacks for review. I guess we'll work down in order. Um, let me bounce over here. There was some votes for my attack on four, but I think actually uh, Nord's attack was better. So let me uh, replay that to start. So Nord, this is a popular internet base. I think the mistake this base has or the difference this base has is this walled off segment that you don't see all the time. Usually that's open. And you'll see that makes a little bit of a difference as he uses the, you know, the Hebo flanking that we see in a lot of Nord's attacks. Uh, it ends up, this part of it gets a nice push and creates the cut that he really wants to see, giving his team that flow uh, towards the middle uh, that you want. Um, there they go. They're trucking along. And also nice patience on his tome. Waiting, waiting, waiting. Doesn't even use it on the uh, first Inferno. I guess he figured he could get through it and then uh, uses it. To, when's he going to use it? The freeze in the back. That's, an, that's a little bit out of order than typically what you'd see. Not that that's right or wrong, but I guess he'll use it now. There it is. So he, so it's usually, usually you'll see those tomes come down and they'll be uh, the initiation. The freeze is used for the last stage. Uh, and the tome is more for the first Inferno coupled with the CC. Um, kind of. So I don't know if, if Nord would agree or disagree uh, that that was good or bad, but let's pick up the pace. Well, you know, I'm moving kind of slow with this one. Whoops. Let's pick it up to four. So we'll finish it out. But he's, what's interesting now is he's holding the loon, um, ended up with plenty of time, 30 seconds or more was left on the clock, but he held that loon quite a while. Uh, nice patience just in case that archer queen decided not to go for that, uh, storage. I think that was his main concern. So that was a nice recognition of not spamming out his reserve units. Um, and losing the day. But, uh, yeah, I think I missed on that base, so hmm, maybe I should learn something there. Let's go ahead and skip down to um, no Town Hall 10 action this time, but we've got a few votes in the Town Hall 9 category. Let's do one that we haven't seen usually in the, in the list, uh, Corey on 11. Supposedly he had uh, some really nice value out of his uh, Valks in this attack. So let's take a gander at that. Let me speed it up here. Oh, he's coming from the top. So nice healer healer giant movement with the bowler. So it's a Hebo. Hejibo. Hejibo! Yep, yep. There it goes. Yep, green with it. So far, so good. And then hogs out the side to reduce pressure. Where are these Valks? I never even saw them. They were that valuable. They just disappeared. They they basically ascended. <laughs> they were so awesome. They left the field of battle and have moved on to another plane of existence. We'll go back and we'll take again. Let's speed it up uh, and we'll take another look at it and maybe talk about the uh, the flow that he ended up getting there. Because the, the hog action... I mean, as you come in and off that corner, that's the nice thing about the Heiji type attacks is that you can get a, a corner attack will work pretty well, unlike bowler walks um, where you try to penetrate or get the bowlers going one way. God bless the bowlers. So there's the there's the healer giants and the cut teams. Valks still aren't down. There's only four of them, so I wonder what they're referring to. You can see, though, what, what I'd be concerned about, this is a, this AD and this AD. This one's set far enough back that I don't think it's a real risk if, it, if they tack up on this wall. I think I can actually look at the... I can pick it, can I? Yeah, so even if they even if they post up on this or this wall, I don't think that AD is a worry. It's this guy that's the problem because he could kind of snap at it. So it's interesting that he chose that angle versus going right at the... Uh, I would think most people would go at this one or this one because you've got direct access 
from the initial penetration point uh, to an AD. Um, but there's less there's less control, I guess is what he would point out is like as you look at what the I think what he's probably thinking about is is you look at what the Giants are probably going to bang through on it's going to be this or this because those are the two defenses that are touching the wall. So if it does go that pathing. The healers will probably swing like this and probably stay out of the range of this guy. I guess is what he was thinking. Let's see what it actually did. I'm still waiting for the Valks. Where are you, little Valks? Oh, they're down. They're in there in the mass. Got the queen, broke the wall. Okay. So that would be interesting. I'd be curious to hear if Corey or somebody that watched that attack, you know, did you see how the Valks burn this wall which actually was the critical point to get through right there i wonder if that was anticipated by knowing that the queen shooting the team the valks um and king bum rushed that corner to get to the queen so basically it's a way of knowing where the hole is going to be which is with the hiji you really want to know where's the penetration on the interior wall going to be because you can kind of plan ahead of while on the healer surviving so i'd be curious if anybody thinks that that could have been anticipated by looking at the base and knowing the mix and the deployment, would you have known that the Valk and King would have blown through and taken that wall out or not? Um, so that's a good one. Let's also take a gander at... Well, Magnus hasn't had a play in a while. Let's give him a spin. I think it's this one. Nope. Nope. Which one is it on, A eh, Mag? 10? It's on 10, but H has the win. Strange. All right, AMAG, you don't get the vote then. We switch out of AMAG's vote. I must have wrote it down wrong. Um, instead, we'll take a look at Wu on 12. Right there. And Wu continues to try to get the clan to rethink Laloon. So here it is, another Laloon attack from Wu. You can see kind of, well, what, what really gives it a flavor of Laloon when you look at it? So he's using that 4Q that he likes to get access to two ADs. So he's basically thinking he can get Expo, Queen, AD, and maybe this AD from his push through with the Queen shooting over and the CC. So that's not bad as long as the Queen survives all that, and it does. So I guess his real recognition there, as you look at what he had going on, is the ranges of... Well, he also the timing. See, because as he tied up this side of the base, that kept the pressure off the queen. And then when you look at what the queen's got to deal with from this range, notice really nothing stops her from moving to the town and then to this AD. So I would be it'd be an interesting question for Wu. Did he acknowledge? Did he recognize the, you know, the timing of his distract from his second phase? Because here comes his loon second phase. Uh, as far as keeping pressure off the queen from that, I guess, from her perspective, right flank. And then the, uh, you know, knowing that this left flank and front forward facing is really not a pressure point for him to get the two crit next final critical asset of his push with his queen team. Because if so, then that's that's just beautiful. That would be a beautiful moment. <laughs> so let's speed it up. So after this, you know, it's, it's the classical dude where you just kind of push in. Two hounds. Well, that hound didn't live as long as you'd think. Was that this? And that was a CC hound. So that was a full power. But you notice the thing that always I always like to see with the loons at work is this nice spread of pups that are surviving. And it really wasn't that close when you look at it. That's a lot of stuff. Oh, what patience with the final, with the final uh, balloon there. Wow, that that was nice. Wonder how much time he had left on the clock of total. Does anybody remember? Let's take a look. That's got to be close. So, yeah, 313. Yeah, so basically he had no time on the clock. So he held that loon, even though he knew that basically either I wait till that loon locks. Or no, it didn't. I think his loon was under fire from that. But it was one archer tower versus one AD. Or one archer tower. One archer tower versus one loon. So a very nice attack, though. But you can see that was what why people have gravitated to Valks, is that you really don't see that time pressure that you used to see consistently with the loons that worked out. I don't know if that's a good or bad thing about the game now, but clearly uh, 
Wu Boy's got it figured out in terms of the timing. And maybe that's one of the interesting things to look at when you look at his attacks is where in the push of the queen attack team, so as she's pushing in, when do you launch your other front? Because clearly that timing, you need to be more compressed with that timing than you would think. You can't really wait for her to finish her job. You're waiting for her to just have lock the CC probably, and then you're bringing in your other front. So how many have we done here? We've done we done we done done uh, Nord, and we did Corey, and we did Wu. So I guess that's our usual three. So let's pick our bonus round fourth attack. It could either be uh, my attack, my on um, on four uh, Town Hall eleven, or yep, or okay, or that no. Nope. So let's just do the Town Hall eleven. We don't see a lot of Town Hall elevens, and it's rare for me to actually do one. I don't think it's a really well developed base. I mean, but, you know, it's the lowest Town Hall 11 they had. So four times speed because I am the bonus round. Let's see here. So what do we got? It's a bowler walk, of course. If anything, I'm always bowler walking because I'm stupid. I like it. I'm just stuck in habits. Yeah, that was nice. It was a nice delay on the tome, I guess, was probably the one thing I would say that was done right. I didn't like what you Did you see how that uh, the bowler walk spread? And that's a that's a problem that I continue to struggle with solving of a deployment on the bowler walk. What you want is a tight little group that walks together. When they do that spread action, the healers can't keep it all together. So I continue to tinker around with ways to get the bowler walk to always be just a tight little pod. I have not solved that problem. So there you go. Our recap with Pal Koo. Let me see if I can see from war details what that means. Oh, here you go. Pavilion Avengers League of Knights Unite. <laughs> I don't know. That's, that's, I'm glad you shortened it to an acronym because, boy, that's a long name. Pavilion and Avengers League of Knights United. All right. Oh, and they've got a Legend League member. Congratulations, Ferdy. Good job. Okay. <laughs> I'll talk to you guys later. What am I going to do? My clan sucks. Hey, it's JTJ. Uh, I think that's an all-out attack. No! No! It's the legendary JTJU! 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 What? I got Rhyhorn! You and this army. Download Clash of Clans for free. Then subscribe to JTJU and win.